Well hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this one I'm going to be making this yo-yo uh, hand lantern generator thing. Uh, it's uh, basically a yo-yo with a motor. Uh, I have a capacitor bank here but I could put a, uh, a battery in the handle. Uh, all handmade so let's make it. Now I'm going to start with my uh, motor and this motor has its bridge rectifier uh, already done and that's going to be my generator. I'm going to have two blocks of wood for my, uh, for my actual yo-yo. Uh, two sticks here for the handle and two sticks that are going to be the sides of that. And I'll also need a shaft and a smaller pulley to go in there. I have a nice chisel of a standard size here and so I'm going to use that as the standard for my shaft because I'm going to put a hole through both of those. Now I could do that completely with the chisel but I've decided to do it another way of uh, finding the centre corner to corner, drilling a pilot hole and I'm going to use a brace and bit just to make things a little bit quicker. And then with the chisel I can then square that hole up. So with the shaft fitting snugly, I can then get the rough circle with a compass of the yo-yo. Now cutting corners off bit by bit, I'm going to turn those into circles and then round it off some more and with a, well, a saw we'll need to start with and maybe a file now I'm going to put a V in there with my uh, rasp all the way around that that's so the string can enter down in there when it's pulling back and forth it's also a good idea to really ground that off so that it's a nice smooth thing and sand it so that the string doesn't wear out so much. Now in a similar manner, uh, cut a circle um, with the hole in the middle and with your file make a V around there to make this pulley. Um, you can experiment with the size but that's going to be the pulley to the, to the generator. Next I'm going to take the two hand pieces there and think about the motor. Now the motor is going to go in here with the pulley here. So I'm going to have to cut out this piece here to have access to the pulley and then make this into a, um, a recess on both sides so it clamps between there. With the motor sandwiched in there, I'm going to drill a hole and then uh, screw that with one screw to keep those two together. Now that that's all assembled, um, I should have actually calculated that a bit better where I should have put that together and then moved that motor so that that will line up. It'll still line up okay if I fiddle it a bit, but uh, that's something to look out for. When you're placing that motor, place it so that it lines up with your pulley. Now this side here, I'm going to glue and nail it to this bottom layer because this is going to come off, but this is going to be attached as firm as possible to there. But on this side, I'm going to put a couple of screws so that they can be taken apart. I'm going to make a, a mark for the uh, axle hole here in bearing and transfer that to the other side in exactly the same place with a square. For the 
the bearing, I only cut a, a tab out of metal, in this case a tin, bend those tabs over, and, nail, and then over that hole there, across the green so that those can go into there. Now punch a, a little hole through there to at least make the mark where to put the hole off on this side. So there we have the bearings uh, that a nail will go through. I'm going to mark off this side and trim it so it'll fit in there. And, and in the center of that, a small nail each side, snipping off the head. Now, assembling it this far, uh, we can figure out now how long our or how big our O-ring is going to be. You can use a, a, um, a rubber band, but it won't last very long. Neoprene O-rings will work much better and get one of the right distance so it's snug but not too tight. Then I'm going to put a block at this end, things to define the other end of it. Nail on this side, screw on this side. Then I'm going to cut these off, flush. So now it's a case of attaching some string into that there and tying it. Just tie a knot into that. And then we're ready to go to see whether functionally it works. And wind it up a bit. Now, it's basically functioning. If I attach some LEDs with some clips, I decided to put the LEDs right on the end here, so I'm going to use the block as the base and drill a whole bunch of little holes and work out the circuitry afterwards. So there I have it uh, with my LEDs there uh, connected in, uh, in uh, parallel, I think, uh, down to my motor here. Unfortunately, they sold me blue ones, so that's not quite as good as I had hoped, but that can be fixed by changing those. Now, um, I have a capacitor bank here which I can hook on there to, to uh, smooth that out quite a bit so that it, it doesn't uh, fluctuate quite as much. And it could also do with a resistor to make it more constant and not drain as fast because it's just going straight through the leads now. But there, it works. Ah, instead of the, uh, of the capacitor bank, I have this little battery that I rescued from a remote control car, I think. I can unscrew that and embed that into there so it can be all one piece. And I can also sculpt the handle to be a bit more like this so that I can hang on to it a bit better. But there we are, it is functioning.